Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to give you another daily dose of Dismal Disney. Yep. <laughs> so Cruella, uh, Cruella made it into theaters this weekend. It did. And uh, it got beat by A Quiet Place Part 2. Well, I understand that though, because the first one, second one are supposed to be really, really good. Uh, it was a very good movie. I actually took the kids to go see it. We went to the theater, and it was the first time Squid King's been in the theater. Now, we went to go see Demon Slayer. He did not go, mm -hmm. go see it, but uh, it was a very good movie. Now, Cruella ruined A Quiet Place Part 2 for us because during the very quiet spots in that quiet place part two we heard the Cruella soundtrack blasting mm -hmm. through the theater you know, next door. I hear door. it has an amazing soundtrack. Uh, it sounded, I'm like, that is that Blondie? They said that it has, uh, it, the soundtrack is, is very good though. Yeah, so that that's one one good thing. One good thing Cruella has. Everything we I've heard about sounds like a freaking train I've heard wreck, a mixed but... bag on it, but go ahead. Anyway, we're gonna talk about how the box office is surprisingly uh, rebounding. I know my AMC stock is going up like crazy because people are like, wait, wait, people people will go back to the movie. Well, theater? not just that. AMC is getting money to go buy more theaters. Yeah. Which I'm like, wait a minute. You were bankrupt. You laid your people off for months and now you're going to go buy more theaters. Yes, they are. Um, but what's going on here is not only did Cruella uh, underperform, but Disney put all their eggs into their, their streaming basket. They think everybody's just going to stream these movies now. And they kind of gave theaters the middle finger. And now people are kind of pissed they're like wait you can bring Cruella out in the theaters and do premiere access but the next Pixar movie you're just gonna dump it on the Disney mm -hmm. Plus yeah it doesn't seem like there's a rhyme or reason to this no so there, there's there is uh some explanation I guess according to Cartoon Brew for for Luca and they are going to release it theatrically in some countries just not the U.S. That, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. So Disney might have backed the wrong horse. Oh, uh, no, I don't but know, but that was dumb. So we're going to talk about Cruella in the box office and how Disney, I, I have to wonder if they're going to continue down this path because they can they can obscure their numbers yes, much more easily. I think that has more to do with it than anything. And uh, hoodwink investors into thinking that more people are watching their stuff than is actually going on. Just a theory. They're just trying to build up Disney Plus so they can say we have more subscribers. Mm -hmm. So before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 192,000 subs. Uh, thank you for the support. And uh, yeah, we're at almost 200,000. We still got to think about what we're going to do for 200,000. No idea. I don't know. Uh, maybe an actual live stream because we don't do, <laughs> we don't do those very, very often. So this article puts it all together. This is coming from Bounding in the Comics. Uh, Quiet Place Part 2 trounces Disney's Cruella at the box office. Now, Quiet Place Part 2 was not available on any streaming services. And actually, it was kind of cool. We went to go see it, and John Krasinski had a little thing at the beginning. Oh, did he? Thanking people for coming out to the theaters. Aw. Uh, it was actually very cool. He was like, thank you so much. This means so much. We held off on this movie because we wanted you guys to see it in theaters uh, so you can experience everything with that uh, you know, Blondie music blasting through the Yeah, I don't think they meant the that. <laughs> like it was. Damn you, Cruella. <laughs> you ruined Quiet Place. Um Anyway, but the numbers reported Paramount's The Quiet Place Part 2 grossed $47.4 million over the holiday weekend. For pandemic, mm -hmm. that's pretty damn good. Yeah, and now um, theaters are just now starting to get back open in places. Yeah, the report's the biggest hit at the box office since theaters started reopening, handily beating Godzilla vs. Kong, which did $32.2 million in April. Again, though, that was another one that was released, released on HBO Max simultaneously. And it's, in, it's really hard with it, this now. And I think that's the point. I think that's the point of all of this is we can fudge it, you know, because nobody mm -hmm. can really say definitively how many people are watching mm -hmm. a until it's useful. If a third party comes out and says, yeah, we think that the Falcon Winter Soldier was the top streaming show this week. And Disney would be like, guess what, everybody? It's yeah. gospel. If they're not saying that, then that means that that doesn't look like the numbers are or showing them that it was. Uh, Cruella came in a very distant second place. It only grossed $21.3 million. Again, it was also released on Disney Plus, though. Yep. Uh, Cruella was also available to purchase for $30. It's unclear how many people decided to purchase it. Now, Samba TV is doing some tracking or trying to do some tracking of streaming. And mm -hmm. we're going to... I think what's going to happen is since streaming is the new thing right now eventually we're going to get like nielsen or some somebody's going to get into it and be like no we have to keep track right of people especially now that we've got more and more of these services being ad supported it's like we have to keep track of how many people are actually watching 
Uh, that's just But here's fair. when we get some interesting numbers. So Samba reports that 686,000 households streamed Cruella over Memorial Day weekend. They claim that's 37% less than the number who streamed Mulan over Labor Day weekend. Wow. Ouch. Well, maybe they, after Mulan, they were like, yeah, we don't, we, we're not falling for that again. <laughs> yeah, $30 for this pile yeah. of Dalmatian shit. Yeah, there we go. 1.1 million households stream Mulan, according to Samba. So, yeah, not great. Uh, not great. But then again, this is a, look, I, some people, I've heard, I've heard mixed things about Cruella. But I can honestly tell you, this is a movie that literally nobody asked for. Mm -hmm. Nobody but asked for it. people did point out, and I will give it this. They said that what was nice about it was it wasn't just an exact copy of the animated film. But the problem is they made a lot of changes, you know, yeah. to, to, the, to the lore of Cruella by doing this film. So Quiet Place Part 2 was such a big hit that it might have even outgrossed the opening weekend for the first film. I'm sure it did. Uh, Box Office Pro, because it was, it was kind of a low-key... yeah. Movie when it came out. Uh, Box Office Pro claims the film earned an estimated $57 million. If you factor in Memorial Day, the first film earned $50.2 million in its opening weekend back in April 2018. And back then, there wasn't the pandemic fears. All the theaters were open. A lot of theaters didn't go bankrupt, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, Quiet Place became kind of a kind of a cult thing. Like, we mm -hmm. didn't watch it in the theaters. Uh, I really didn't even know much about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, John Krasinski did a thing, something, something, quiet, something. And then it came out on video. Video and we watched it and the kids loved it and uh you know people have really been looking forward to this movie for a while it got pushed back a year and uh, i i personally think it was worth it i think it was it was actually really good um i was like nah see they always drop the ball at the sequel i'm waiting for the third one. third one they're gonna drop the ball well, i hope not third one they're gonna drop the ball so it appears also crushed the numbers prediction model their model had a quiet place part two bringing in 25.7 million over the three-day weekend uh, factory in Memorial Day, they claimed a weekend around 50 million, which is close to double the model's prediction. Uh, they predicted Cruella would do 15.8 million. But again, it was just for a normal three-day weekend. That includes Fridays. So both these movies, honestly, performed more than... They expected. They expected. So how smart is it of Disney to bet everything on Disney Plus. They basically, and they did, they basically stuck it to the theaters mm -hmm. and they, they more or less told the theaters like, we're going to do what we're going to do. Because from Disney's point of view, you know, 600,000 people paying, paying 30 bucks, you know, that might not have gone to theater, it might wind up that they, you know, you take out the distribution, all that, they're pocketing more money. I think that's what it is. They get to pocket more money that way. You know, so then they can go brag to the investors or Disney Plus revenue or Premier Access revenues through the roof. So now people are asking questions <laughs> uh, rightfully about Luca. Why Luca, which is a Pixar movie, which mm -hmm. historically Pixar movies, you know, usually are pretty consistent. I don't think they've ever had a, an outright bomb. No. Um, some of them have maybe underperformed, but uh, Luca looks cute. Uh, it does. And it probably would have done okay in the theater. Yeah. And here's the thing. You know, they're still putting out uh, Black Widow in the theaters mm -hmm. and on Dis the Disney Plus Premier Access. They're putting the Jungle Cruise in theaters and with Disney Plus Premier Access. But Luca is only going to be given away for free on Disney Plus, Disney Plus subscribers. So you're not even having to pay the Premier Access for it. Yeah, I mean, this is this is weird. I, I got to tell you, this is hella weird because I'm like, if I were in, look, I think Pixar animators are rightfully concerned I would be worried. I'm like, this tells me our last two movies have basically just got dumped on to Disney+. Plus. Yeah, and Souls won all kinds of awards. But it was just dumped another one that just gave away to subscribers. Now, the flip side of this, they could argue is, no, we, we're we believing that we're trusting your movie so much that we're giving it away to subscribers because we know that it'll bring in subscribers to come get it for free. So they could be say, they could be banking on the Pixar films to bring the subscriber numbers up, which they could be doing that. And, you know, if you look at it that way, it's not so insulting. Yeah, but it sounds like they're, you know, Pixar is the sacrificial lamb. It does come know. across that way. But if you're looking at it, because Disney Plus is their number one thing, they're, they're banking everything on. And they're giving it, they're giving it to subscribers. Um, 
that they might be hoping that it brings in a bunch of new subscribers. And so that could be what they're they're using it for too. I, I mean, I can see why the people at Pixar would feel bad. I'm just saying devil's advocate here. It could be that they're trying to bank on that to raise their numbers. It's so good, guys, that we're just going to give it away for free because, uh, you well, know. Well, to them, the numbers on Disney Plus are more important. Yeah, and that's that. I would be afraid, and this is before we get into this, with Disney consolidating divisions, mm -hmm. with John Lasseter being out of the picture, I would be concerned that at some point Disney and Pixar, they're going to just merge both of their animation studios together and be like, why do we have two animation studios producing effectively the same kind of content? Because it used to be that, you know, Disney animation did the 2D content, Pixar did the 3D content. And um, now the lines are totally blurred. Well, it could also be that they'll keep the two the, the two studios and the fact that uh, animation is what everybody's banking on. Yeah. And they can produce twice as much animation. Well, we said when we did a video covering this when it was first announced that, you know, this is probably to compete with Netflix because Netflix mm. has come out and said they're dumping a ton of money into you know, animated movies, animated content that's going to be, you know, part of the regular subscription. It's not going to be an upcharge. And a lot of it's being headed by former Disney people. You know, so mm -hmm. it's like they they got to compete with their own people. Well, that's what I'm saying. They might keep both just because it gives them twice as much content. Um, and we know they're teaming up with other studios to do other content, too. So be outside of their own animation studios. So, I mean, to me, it makes sense to keep both um, with if animations where their priorities lie. It also makes sense to me to put it on Disney Plus as a perk to try to get the subscriber numbers up after yeah. Soul won some awards and things. But I can also understand why the Pixar people might feel personally slighted. Like, what do we do? That our stuff doesn't go to the theater. So I actually can see both sides of this. And I'm not trying to argue with you. I'm just saying oh, I, can no, that's see, okay. I can see the argument for the other side as well. So um, this is coming from Bob Chapek, and he, he talked about it during J.P. Morgan's Tech right. Media and Communications Conference. Yeah, they did. They had um, that the other day. Yeah, so this is specifically about Luca. We've increased our investment in creative content to ensure that all channels of distribution have a full mm -hmm. complement of offerings. Disney Plus. Yep, to sort of keep everybody happy, but nowhere is that more uh, the case than Disney Plus. They're putting Plus. all their money on Disney Plus, which is what I just said. Yep. We want to make sure, given the importance of Disney Plus to us in the marketplace and our shareholders, we keep feeding that machine. As far as Chapek is concerned, theatrical exhibition in the U.S. is still a gamble. I I don't know, guys. I don't know. Quiet Place did twice as much as... You know how, I, what I love is their argument that we believe that, that the theme parks now are going to pick up because of pent-up demand, which is it's true and it is. But why do they not apply pent-up demand to the movie theaters? Yeah, because look, I actually had a hard time getting tickets for Quiet Place on a Saturday matinee. It was like one o'clock mm -hmm. in the afternoon. They were selling out as I was putting seats into the cart. Because it, for people, that's a way to return to normal. And it's yeah. a way to go have entertainment and something fun that's cost effective. And you don't have to go too far with the pandemic and everything. You know, if you want to argue it's still going on and everything else, you can feel safer because you're staying close by. And it, you can take your kids and do something fun. And it doesn't cost you an arm. And like, like going to the flip in Disney costs you, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. Or, you know, well, not tens of thousands, but it could, depending where you stay. Oh, it easily thousands could, Thousands of yeah. dollars. At least three to five thousand dollars, you know easily and you can go to the, to the movie theater for like a fraction of that and get popcorn and snacks it's probably still be under 100 bucks and you don't have to go too far and it, so i don't understand why they argue pent-up demand on one side but then they keep ignoring that in the other um to, or to to validate why they they start thing on disney plus because one costs significantly more well i'm just saying just be <laughs> honest and say hey we're feeding it to disney plus because we're trying to grow the numbers sacrificial lamb uh, or merman or whatever they are. Uh, as far as Chapek is concerned, and again, this is coming from Cartoon Brew, probably the best source for animation industry news out there, uh, in my opinion. Uh, as far as Chapek is concerned, theatrical exhibition in the U.S. is still a gamble. We're seeing some hesitancy to return in a way that would look anything like 2019. I don't know. I don't know, Bob. I don't buy that, Bob. Quiet Place 2 did twice what they expected more than the original movie did before the pandemic. Uh, well, this... this, this thing he talked at was before quiet place two came out just FYI. Uh, yeah well i think they're last gonna, week they're gonna have to backpedal this yeah. is this is interesting and as such during this sort of interim period it's really nice to be able to give consumers some flexibility uh, so luca is going to premiere on disney plus on june 18th at no extra cost to subscribers like soul on christmas day that made sense because to me soul felt like they were 
uh, trying to compete with Wonder Woman mm -hmm. being dumped on Christmas Day. Uh, so I guess I can kind of see that. Like, here's a Christmas present from Disney. You get a free movie, you know, right. whatever. And that's just what the whole thing is. It's not about, you know, what he's saying. It's about driving up the Disney Plus numbers. Yeah, we'll have sort of similar impact like we saw when we did Soul. I don't uh, know if you will, because the theaters are open now. Yeah, uh, back during the holidays. Uh, he also noted that more than half of households with a subscription to Disney Plus don't have kids. Keep, okay, this is funny to me. They keep focusing on this. He keeps bringing this up. At every damn in you know call that he has investor relations whatever and they keep acting like this is some groundbreaking you know who to who to thunk it this doesn't surprise me one iota because when we work in the in the in the pop culture industry and we the circles we run in and stuff there are a lot of people who don't have kids who love Disney and go to Disney all the time with their friends or they're just single or you know, they're just couples that no, no kids single family double income whatever mm -hmm. they call it and they're going down to Disney and spending money right and left we see it with cosplayers all the time and everything else. Not surprising to me at all. But Disney's like so, now they're doubling down on let's give offerings for people without children. That's like their new thing. Like, oh, we found a new market. Oh, hot damn. We're so smart. This is not surprising in any way. Uh, yeah, but it's so weird. It's like half the people that subscribe to Disney Plus don't have kids. Let's put a kids movie on there. Yeah, that, that's true. But you I'm know? just like, they keep bringing this up like, oh, we're so surprised. They did. They're so surprised with this. What a revelation. It's like, I was sitting there. I wasn't surprised at all. Have you been on Instagram? You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, Yeah, but this is, uh, again, this does feel like it's kind of a sacrificial lamb. Now, not every country is, is bypassing uh, uh, Luca in the theaters. Actually, there are several countries. So there's, there's good news if you live in uh, Turkey or the Ukraine or Serbia, you can see it in the theater or Pakistan or Poland or, oh my God, the country of type, the country, the country of Taiwan. Uh-huh. Yeah. There I know. I go. thought that was hilarious. Interesting. Um, yeah. Disney's so he's going to be in trouble. If you, if you live in one of those countries, you can see Luca in the theaters, but apparently it's not important enough to put in the theaters in the US, even though things are doing better than expected. Maybe, maybe though, maybe they'll look at, well, they've already announced it for June 18th, but I'm like, maybe they'll look at the numbers, even for Cruella this weekend to be like, oh yeah, hey, we were really off. Uh, we were really off, guys. But they've already announced these, so they're not gonna make yeah. changes to them at this point. And are people gonna go if they know they're getting it for free on Disney Plus? Like, why, why would you pay? It's like, I'm gonna get it for free. Right, they're anyway, not gonna be able to change look at this point anyway. Yeah. There's nothing they're gonna change on that. All right, so we're going to wrap this one up. Yep. All right, so please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.